What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to the Locked On Pirates podcast. I am, of course, your host who does the most, Ethan Smith, and the Pirates are coming off of a 5-1 to one victory last night against baseball's best team in the Los Angeles Dodgers, and a big reason for that was the play of Jose Quintana. But has the starting pitching improved a lot from April to May? We'll talk a little bit about that today, as well as Cole Tucker's decision that he made mid-game yesterday that baffled a lot of people, including myself. But is it something that could be good for Cole Tucker, or are we seeing the beginning of the end of his time here in Pittsburgh? And of course, Tony Gonsolin and Bryce Wilson are your starting pitchers in Game 2 between the Dodgers and the Pirates, and what are the keys to victory for the Pirates to pick up a much-needed series win against baseball's best team? But with all that said... That's what we're going to be covering on today's episode. And, of course, thank you for making me your first listen of the day every single day. Of course, you can listen wherever you find your podcast here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at MVP underscore Ethan. Follow the Locked On Pirates Twitter at Locked On Pirates, where I live tweet all of the games going on in the world of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And with all that said, you know when the intro hits, it's time to get real. So let's have a fun episode. You are Locked On Pirates, your daily Pittsburgh Pirates podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome back to that Pittsburgh Pirates podcast, of course, This is Locked On Pirates. I am, of course, your host who does the most, Ethan Smith, and I was buzzing yesterday. Much like most of you listening to this podcast were probably buzzing yesterday about everything that happened in the city of Pittsburgh. Of course, the Penguins pick up a huge 7-2 victory over the New York Rangers, so make sure you go check out Hunter Hodes over at Locked On Penguins for all of your coverage there. But also across the river, the Pittsburgh Pirates picked up a 5-1 to one victory over baseball's best team in the Los Angeles Dodgers. Jose Quintana, of course, six-inning, uh, pretty, pretty good inning or outing for him, pretty good inning. He had a lot of good innings last night. Uh, Six innings pitch, two hits, no runs, five Ks on 102 pitches. Quintana, much like Tyler Anderson last year, has done a phenomenal job being an innings eater. He's done a phenomenal job with everything that he's done so far through his first six starts. And realistically, we're only a little bit into the month of May. It is May 10th, so we do have to still temper expectations here with the starting pitching staff, but At the end of the day, things have looked a lot better, and I mean a lot better from the starting pitching staff than they did in April. Of course, in April, the starting pitchers were just awful for the most part. They were just very bad. 6.17 ERA, which was 28th in all of baseball. In May, that has improved to a 2.60 ERA. Uh, so far this month, which is squarely top 10 in all of Major League Baseball. So that is something that I talked about offensive production yesterday on uh, the episode with Gary, where I spoke that the team was 8-1 and one in games they finished with five runs or more. That has now moved to 9-1 and one in 10 such games. And the pitching has been a big component of that over the last couple of weeks. Uh, Bryce Wilson, who we'll get into a little bit later, his ERA has improved. Zach Thompson has come into his own a little bit. Mitch Keller has had some pretty decent starts as well. JT Brubaker, eh. Like, the starting pitching staff still has a long way to go. I think we could all agree on that, but seeing the improvement from April to May has been a big thing for me watching this team play, especially from the starting pitching and the pitching component, because they had one of the better bullpens in all of baseball um, in the month of April and to begin the season throughout this month of May with Dylan Peters just recently giving up his first earned run of the year. David Bednar gave up a home run in last night's game, even though he had a five-run cushion and settled in very much immediately after that. He's been phenomenal. Will Crow has done a phenomenal job as well outside of the bullpen. Um, I think the bullpen suits Will Crow really well, actually. He was supposed to be a starter, but I do think just with the way that he plays, I think that everything he's done so far out of the bullpen has been warranted. I think it's just where he suits himself better. And 
the Pirates, again, are trying to fill all of these holes in this lineup right now, and filling the pitching staff out is going to be their biggest challenge. It was their biggest challenge in the 2013 through 2015 run. It was their biggest challenge even after the Chris Archer trade, where they just could not field five good pitchers. And they're still very far away from that. And Jose Quintana, much like Tyler Anderson, is probably going to be a trade piece come July. And there's no issue in that. That's what he's supposed to be. And realistically, Will Crow as well, of course, his ERA got a little inflated with the Josh Van Meter situation. It's just inherently too difficult to pitch to a guy who just hasn't caught in 11 years and never caught at the big league level. And catcher is a very important position. Andrew Knapp and Michael Perez right now have to hold down that fort. They just have to. Michael Perez so far has behind the plate and uh, at the plate where he has two home runs in as many games, which if you had that on your Pirates bingo card in 2022, I don't know what to tell you. But one thing that I'm really starting to see from these starting pitchers that I'm enjoying a lot, especially last night uh, with Quintana, yeah, he only had 56 strikes and four walks, but a lot of these guys are starting to just pound the strike zone, Zach Thompson being one of them. They're just throwing the ball in the strike zone and playing the contact, which I have no issue with that when you look right now that the Pirates have one of, the, one of if not the best, defensive outfields in all of baseball right now with Brian Reynolds, Ben Gamble, and Jake Marisnik when they're all out there. Diego Castillo has looked serviceable over at short defensively. You have one of the better defensive third basemen in all of baseball, and key Brian Hayes, who currently ranks ninth in batting average among all players in Major League Baseball right now. So if you could get that from him on top of the defensive acumen that he provides on a daily basis, I think Pirates fans would take that, right? Uh, but again, you these pitchers need to realize that they have a lot behind them with this defense. And that's why I always say, I think defense is one of those little spots that everybody always forgets about. They always forget the defense is a major component to how the game plays. Because if a pitcher looks behind him and sees, okay, there's Jake Marisnik, Ben Gamble, and Brian Reynolds behind me, he's going to be more willing to pitch the contact. He's going to be more willing to pound the strike zone and put that K rate up, put the strike zone up. I mean, because eventually, too, with umpires lately, which we've seen some fun stuff with umpires and Pirates games over the past week or so, if you're pounding the strike zone and you're getting strikes and swing and misses, that's going to play in your favor as a starting pitcher or even a relief pitcher when you're clipping the corners the umpire is probably going to be more willing to give it to you because you've been hitting the strike zone. It's kind of a reward factor that a lot of these umpires like to use, and I have no issue with them using as well. I love the human element of baseball, and that's the one thing that I'm loving about these pitchers is you're starting to see the progression move forward a little bit with these guys. And as me and Gary and a bunch of other guests have alluded to on this podcast multiple times, that if Mitch Keller... Zach Thompson and Bryce Wilson, and then eventually Rolanzi Contreras can all become serviceable pitchers before the end of this year. You're looking at a team that with guys like O'Neill Cruz and Nick Gonzalez and Henry Davis and a lot of these other top prospects waiting on the horizon, you can make moves in free agency that say the NL Central is not that great right now. Outside of the Brewers and the Cardinals, the Pirates are a third place team. Maybe you move into the offseason if some of those guys become serviceable and bring in some valuable starting pitching and maybe even some relief pitchers to help out with Dylan Peters, uh, Will Crow, and David Bednar, and Chris Stratton, who I always love to mention as well. Maybe the Pirates move, make that move, but I want to keep seeing the starting pitching staff improve. I want to see them go out there and do things they did yesterday where – they virtually just, Quintana just shut down the Dodgers, which he's historically good against the Dodgers uh, of any team he's ever played. His ERA is lowest against the Los Angeles Dodgers. So that doesn't exactly surprise me at all. But again, I liked what I saw from Jose Quintana yesterday. I've liked what I've seen from the pitching staff so far. And if you want to bet on these guys to ever do really well, and you have a very firm, firm belief that a starting pitcher is going to beat a team, Make sure you go do it at betonline.net. Of course, BetOnline is the best place to do all of your sports betting this 2022 season. You got the NBA playoffs, the NHL playoffs, Major League Baseball, UFC and, MM, uh, UFC and boxing. And, of course, you have next season's NFL futures. Of course, the NFL schedule does come out on Thursday. 
So you'll be able to get a better grasp on where you think the Steelers' win total might be. You might be able to get a better grasp on who might win the Super Bowl. You might be able to do a bunch of other things that you think that would be fun over at Bet Online. Of course, you can find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments on Bet Online, and it is your continued source for all of your sport wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions. And Bet Online, of course, is where the game starts. The Dodgers, of course, are favored. In tonight's game, once again, to no one's surprise, by the way. But thank you for making me your first listen of the day. Make sure you make Locked On Now your second listen of the day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast. Recaps of MLB games with analysis from our local experts are taking fans through the season like no other network. Free and available wherever you get your podcasts. So I had plenty of takeaways from this game. Uh, last night, but one of them that shook a lot of people on Twitter was Cole Tucker's decision to face Julio Urias after coming into the game from uh, Jake Marizic's thumb injury, which I had no issue with. I was like, okay, he's, he's just hitting, he's here. He has to be serviceable for Jake Marizic, who after a phenomenal diving catch, um, hurt his thumb. Let's hope he's okay. But Cole Tucker, who we all notoriously know, is a switch hitting utility man. He is a switch hitter and faced Julio Urias, who is a left handed pitcher, as a left handed hitter yesterday. I I was beyond confused. I even texted Gary yesterday. I said, what is he doing? I put it on Twitter. I was like, what is going on? And that's all I saw on Twitter was everybody was like, oh, whoa, whoa. Like, what is he doing here? And maybe he's making the switch to just being a left-handed hitter, which if he does, all the will to him, I guess. Um, You have to look at the idea here from Cole Tucker that he's on his last legs at this point. I, I think most people could agree with that, that Cole Tucker is on his last legs. Um, He's not hitting the baseball well. Defensively, he's a lot better than a lot of people want to give him credit for. But um, if we're looking at his splits here, especially in 2022, he's currently batting 169. And the only thing in his splits that is above a 200 right now is his slugging. Yeah, not great. Um, Yeah, not great at all. But basically, when you look at kind of what he's dealing with, I think he's just trying to try something out at this point to make it seem like he's trying to improve, which he is. I'm not saying he's not trying to improve here. Um, But going out there and being a left-handed batter versus being a left-handed pitcher against that kind of thing, not exactly the smartest idea there. Especially in that spot. I don't I think a lot of people were like, okay, it's fine after the fact. Um, but you look at where the spot was, and it was a one nothing game at the time, and you had runners on second and third with two outs. That's not exactly the time to try something new, in my opinion. Um you look at his uh splits this year so far. Uh, versus right-handed pitching, he's seen 46 at-bats, 17 strikeouts, one triple, and nine hits. Of course, against left-handed pitching, including last night, 13 at-bats, seven strikeouts against left-handed pitching. So his K rate against left-handed pitching is more than half every time he goes up to the plate. And he only has one hit against left-handed pitching all year. 24 strikeouts and 59 at-bats as a total. Again, not the time to try something new, pal. And you look at also runners in scoring position with two outs, seven at-bats, no hits, four strikeouts. Yeah. <laughs> I think one of the, I've been a component of saying Cole Tucker deserves every shot that he needs at this point. You either have it or you don't. That That's pretty much where this is going. 
That's where the Pirates are getting to at this point with the likes of Diego Castillo and Michael Chavis, Daniel Vogelbach, uh, Josh Van Meter, who's also been not that great either, um, Hoy Park, even Rodolfo Castro, if he ever comes up again. They have so many different options now that they are okay with saying, okay, Cole Tucker, you're pretty much done. They can say that now. And when you hear the stats that I just read off to you where he has a higher K rate against left-handed pitching, keep in mind that is him as a right-handed hitter. That's not him as a left-handed hitter. That is him as a right-handed batter against a left-handed pitcher. Usually an advantage for a switch hitter to have that kind of matchup. And he struck out seven times in 13 plate appearances. So if you take away the fact that he was a left-handed hitter against Arias last night, that's t- six times in 12 at-bats. That's just unacceptable, man. It's unacceptable. And we'll see what he wants to move forward with. If he wants to become just a pure lefty hitter and that's what he wants to do, fine by me. If it ends up resolving whatever issues he's having at the plate, even more fine by me. I'll say, okay, cool. If you want to be a left-handed hitter, exclusively do it. You've seen guys like Cedric Mullins do it. It worked out for Cedric Mullins. But I'm here to tell you that Cole Tucker isn't Cedric Mullins. He's just not. And it's unfortunate that he's trying to do this right now when he's on his last legs. And we'll see what Cole Tucker does over the next couple weeks. We'll see how this all pans out because I'm sure it'll pan out how it's supposed to. But we'll see. Uh, maybe I don't know if Marisnik's injury is super severe. So you might be seeing more of Cole Tucker in the lineup alongside Gamble and Reynolds in the outfield uh, with Castillo kind of cementing himself as a shortstop at this point. But we'll see. Uh, It'll be interesting to follow over the next couple of weeks. And, you know, if you need fixing on another thing, make sure you go to Rock Auto. RockAuto.com, of course, will fix your car, much like Cole Tucker needs to fix his swing. And with the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, It's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry. You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. So save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend 30, 50, or even 100% more? for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership. Of course, Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years, and Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer, and they have everything you could need, from brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. Go explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution for your auto parts needs. Um, Go to rockauto.com right now. And see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right locked on in their how did you hear about us box so they know that we sent you. Of course, that's amazing selection, reliably, reliably low prices. Sorry, I couldn't say that one apparently. All the parts your car will ever need. That is rockauto.com. And moving into the final part of today's episode, Gonzalez Wilson in game two. Pittsburgh's looking for a series victory against the Los Angeles Dodgers. And it's going to be interesting. Um, The fact that the Pirates even won one game in this series, by the way, for me, is a massive win. Of course, LA is minus 245 favorites on betonline.net. So make sure you get in on that action if you want to. And of course, even after yesterday, Pirates still 12 and 16. Dodgers 19 and uh, 8 at this point. Of course, Tony Gonsolin comes into this game 2 and 0 with a 1.64 ERA and a 1.09 whip. Bryce Wilson, who I alluded to earlier, comes into the game much more improved over the last couple months or a couple weeks of action as he faces off with Gonsolin. And Wilson, by the way, a lot of people might not know this. He's below a four ERA now, 3.79, 16 Ks to his credit. Of course, if you want to bet on the Pirates, that is plus 194 with the over-under at eight runs. And it's very fun 
to see that this Pirates team got that victory yesterday. We'll see if the trend continues. Again, I mentioned it earlier, 9-1 and one in games when they scored at least five runs. You never know. The Pirates also last night, something I wanted to mention earlier that I forgot to, did bring their record to 500 at home. Six and six on the season, and now four and six in their last 10 with a 3.89 ERA. Not too bad, but the Dodgers, man, this is what I'll say. The Pirates did get the win yesterday, but it's going to be very hard to get two against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Uh, of course, the Dodgers have some injuries to their credit here as well. Um, Andrew Heaney, Mitch White, Victor Gonzalez, Plake Tryon, and Chris Taylor are all injured at the moment while the Pirates are without Dwayne Underwood, Roberto Perez, and Jake Marisnik. So right now, Bryce Wilson, what I'm looking for him to do, I'd say at least four or five good innings. That's what I want to see. Four or five good innings of baseball from him. And just hit the strike zone again. 16 Ks on the year, nine walks. Almost identical to Gonsolin, by the way. Uh, both have given up 15 hits across three, uh, or with a three-inning pitch difference. Both have walked nine guys. Both have only allowed three home runs. So I'm expecting another defensive game. But if we're looking for keys to victory, I get yesterday that the Pirates scored five runs. Jack Sawinski picked up his first home run. I get that. But you have to start scoring runs with the amount of hits that you get. It, it was so infuriating yesterday to see Julio Urias give up one earned run while get it, giving up 11 hits. That was infuriating. I mean infuriating to see. And also, 15 hits to five runs, that's fine. I'm okay with that. That's a good, it's a good number. But the way that game was trailing, and it was one nothing all the way up until the bottom of the seventh inning, and the Pirates outclassed the Dodgers yesterday. If anybody wants to tell you different, have fun. Because they outclassed them in every way, defensively, offensively. It was just a all-around beatdown. And the fact that they were only up one nothing before the seventh inning, which was, of course, when Michael Perez and Michael Chavis would score runs, and then Sawinski would add two more in the eighth. That's unacceptable. It just really is, especially when I think I mentioned this yesterday in my recap on Inside the Bucks Basement that Key Brian Hayes, Michael Chavis, and Brian Reynolds had seven hits in 12 at bats. One had an RBI, and that was Michael Chavis. Again, that's very, very concerning. And if the Pirates try to do that again tonight, I'm going to be the first person here to tell you on Locked on Pirates, they are not shutting out the Dodgers again. But I think this will be a very competitive defensive game. And the keys to victory again, score runs, get a good outing from Bryce Wilson. And of course, the bullpen has to come in and do what they did last night. Bednar gave up that home run. It was probably the most meaningless home run he'll ever give up in his MLB career. But if the bullpen and the starting pitching can hold up again, which they did yesterday, and the offense can keep hitting the baseball and scoring runs, I fully expect the Pirates to do well in this game, and those are their keys to victory. I'll be watching right alongside you guys here in a couple uh, at 6.35 Eastern time. Of course, the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Los Angeles Dodgers will start that game at PNC Park around that time, and I will be live tweeting it over at Locked on Pirates. If you're on YouTube, you can see at the bottom of the screen, you can follow me on Twitter at MVP underscore Ethan and at Locked on Pirates. You can also follow this podcast on Spotify, Odyssey, Google Play, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. Just look up Locked on Pirates and it will lead the way. Of course, thank you for making me your first listen, making Locked On Now your second listen, but make sure you make Locked On MLB your third listen of the day here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Paul Francis Sullivan, but please call him Sully, has all the things you need to know about Major League Baseball every single day from past, present, future, everything you need to know. Make sure you go check out Sully over at Locked On MLB. And with that said, we will be recapping the game two of this series with the Los Angeles Dodgers previewing tomorrow's Wednesday matinee, as well as previewing the series against the Cincinnati Reds and any other storylines that come from the world of the Pittsburgh Pirates. With that said, guys, I'm your host who does the most, Ethan Smith, and I will see you 
on the flip side.